the things I think I'm probably most well known for on YouTube is my Bauer tools. This is pretty much my main staple tool line. I also have the M12 tools from Milwaukee. Those are also regularly used and I have purposes for them. I mostly pull those out when I'm doing mechanic type work and things like that. And I plan to grow that tool line as well as this one and continue to get more tools as I have uses for them in each of the tool lines. That being said, as long as I've been making videos on Bauer tools, I've never made a video on any of the drills or the impacts. I have made videos on them. I should say I've not made any reviews on any of these tools. And there's a reason for that. I think the drills and the impacts are one of the staples in any tool line. And they need to be high quality tools and you can't pull them out of the box and review them. I've been using this drill for about two years now. This drill for two years. The regular drill driver, this is the hammer drill, the regular drill driver about two and a half years. I have had problems with this one. I haven't made a review on it because it is what I've uh, termed the generation one or the first generation of the Bauer tools. And to review it with the problems that it has, I don't think it would be fair because you can't even get this version of the Bauer drill driver in Harbor Freight stores anymore. You get the second generation, which if it's anything like this, is gonna be a much better drill. So anyway, let's get to the review on this drill. So I don't wanna to talk too much about the battery in this video, because I have plans to talk about the battery, the chargers, and the tool line as a whole in its own separate video. But basically you have the options of a one and a half amp hour battery, a three amp hour battery, and then even five amp hour batteries. Supposedly someday we will see an eight amp hour battery to hook onto our Bauer cordless tools. Much like some of your other tools, you have a place for a belt clip here on the bottom end of the tool on both sides. They include it. I don't need a belt clip because it's usually more in the way for me than anything else with the way that I use my drills. And so I just don't even put them on. Here at the bottom, you do have a light that comes on when you turn on the drill and it stays on for a little while. It is a reasonably bright light and does light up where you're working. I think I do prefer the Milwaukee style and probably other drill versions. I just say Milwaukee because that's the brand that I used to own. I do think that where the light's coming from gives you a decent angle and does shine on the work just fine. It is nice to have, glad it's there. It works pretty good. So to talk about the main grip or where you put your hand here, this is a nice rubberized over molding that they put onto the drill and it is all kind of clipped in like any other tool brand would be. Uh, the grip that it offers is decent and its durability has been fine. I'm not using this drill every day in a trade or anything like that, so keep that in mind. I probably use this thing on a roughly weekly basis. Some weeks it's three or four or five, six times a week. Other weeks it's uh, once or twice at the absolute most. That's two years of wear there of uh, semi-regular use. Of course, keep in mind, like I said, I'm not using it all day in the trades. This is um, just a moderate use uh, by a DIYer. Actually, maybe heavy use by a DIYer. Moving up here to the directional switch, you have forward and reverse, just like most other drills. When you put it in the neutral, it just blocks the trigger from working. Uh, the way the plastic is shaped in there will not let you pull the trigger. And then, like I said, forward and reverse, like any other drill and like you'd expect from a modern cordless drill. I don't know why this is something I always cover in my videos, but I always kind of talk about branding and just kind of how they lay the tool out with the way it looks. I think the branding looks really nice here on the tool. There are just some stickers. This, of course, is actually actually molded into the plastic and it's just painted white and it rubs off like any other tool brand. You think about the other red and white tool brand that everybody likes that wears off of their tools probably as fast as anything else. But I think one thing the Bauer has going for it is it is a really nice looking tool. Here on the other side, you have a sticker giving you some of the information about it. This thing has a serial number and uh, it's got the warning. It's the warning sticker basically kind of tells you a little bit about it. 20 volt half inch hammer drill in gear one it's zero to 450 RPMs and I'm sure it's pretty close to that and gear two it's zero to 1700 RPMs. So on the back here you do have that rubberized over molding. Kind of helps with some of the shock when you drop the tool or set it down hard or whatever. Uh, not that it's a super thick protective coating but it's definitely going to do more than if it was just a hard plastic there. You also have some rubber bumpers here on the side which is a pretty nice addition though. I'm not sure they stick out. Yeah, they do stick out further than the plastic here, which this does have a little bit of scuffing. As I already briefly mentioned, this drill does have two different gears like you'd expect from any decent 18 volt or 20 volt tool these days. So you do have gear one and gear two 
you're gonna get more torque with gear one. It's gonna spin faster. I already gave you the RPM ratings from the sticker. So now moving here up to the upper side of the drill. It is the hammer drill version of, as I've already mentioned. That is a hard, probably casted metal of some kind. And then you have your setting selection. So basically up here at the top, you have a drilling selection, a driving selection, and then the hammer drill selection. In fact, I can't really speak a whole lot to the actual hammering action because I've had very little concrete, in fact, no concrete, that I've ever had to drive into with this thing. So I'm glad that the feature's there. I know that that time's gonna come when I'm gonna need it in the future, but I've not lived anywhere very permanent to be putting things permanently into concrete. I really wish I could speak to the hammering function, but I just simply can't for right now. So moving forward, you have a clutch. The, the clutch is not going to make a difference when using the hammering function of the the drill or the drilling function of the drill it's really going to matter when you're driving so that you can have some controllability over how much torque that you are putting into whatever you're drilling let me do my best wrapping myself around the camera to show this so as you can see this is the arrow where it points to show you what selection you're on we're on the driving selection and I have the clutch set all the way to one so let's go ahead and give it a try so the clutch is slipping and not engaging the chuck so that you do not over tighten or strip anything that you're driving into whatever you're driving that fastener into. So I'm gonna set it up here. Let's go to nine. A little bit tighter, of course. And it gets harder and harder. So that is the clutch, nice feature to have. That's also on pretty much all modern drills, which now pretty much brings us to the chuck here. So basically you have a textured, I don't know the manufacturing process of it, probably stamped and then, and then textured, but essentially it just gives you enough grip to go ahead and tighten the chuck down onto your drill bits. And of course the old style of doing this is with a key. Uh, now you have, uh, with these modern drills, especially the cordless drills, of course you can still get them with the keys so you can make sure your bits are secured nice and tight into the drill chuck. It's easy to tighten and loosen with one hand. I've not really had any problems with it. It always does what it's supposed to. So now pretty much comes the time to talk about my experience with it, what I think about it, you know, just kind of offer my opinion, throw it out there for whatever it's worth. What have I used this drill for? Well, over the last two years, by and large, I've used it for drilling into metal. I don't work with wood all too often, and this thing has seen itself driving mostly drill bits into various thicknesses of metal, which is a pretty demanding task for a cordless drill to do. It takes a long time to get through that metal, especially with the crappy dull bits that I have. I'm on the lookout for some good drill bits. Some of my favorites have been the DeWalt, but that's a discussion for another day. Back on topic here, it's drilled a lot of holes into metal to help me with uh, various fabrication projects. It has spent a little bit of time running into wood. Um, I think that they both are demanding in their own ways. I've really been pretty hard on this drill, as I've mentioned, and it's worked flawlessly throughout this whole time. As far as power goes, you know, this drill isn't going to be your top-notch, biggest power, highest torque, fastest drilling drill out there. That's probably going to be your brushless Milwaukee's, DeWalt's, Makita's, maybe Cobalt's, I don't know, tools in that range. The power is reasonable. It's got pretty much all the power that I need. It's just been a good, reliable drill all the way around. I've just been thinking about my experience with this drill, and I think what it really comes down to is that I don't have a lot to say about it because I think it works exactly the way it should. And the fact that I just don't really have a whole lot to add, I think is not necessarily a bad thing to what I've already said because the thing's just worked. It's a good drill. It's of decent quality. I think it's uh, there on par with the Ryobi tools. Of course, some of the Ryobi tools are almost professional grade, if not professional grade, depending on which ones you buy. So coming back to the drill, it's a great drill with great power, great reliability at a fraction of the price, especially the add-on tools when you consider them. As far as the warranty goes, I could see why someone would have a problem with the Bauer drills and their warranty or the Bauer tools in general and their warranties, right? If you're a guy that is beating on your tools every single day, making money with them, you're gonna want that backed by a great warranty. That's why those other brands are good. But for guys like me that have had it for two years and had the option to buy a two-year extended warranty that basically I could take it in, no, no questions asked, and replace it, I didn't pay for that. Guess what? The drill's still here. It's still working good. It's been exactly pretty much two years, I think, right around there. And I don't see it slowing down anytime soon. So buying that extra warranty would have been a waste. And paying for the power tool that just includes the warranty and the cost 
would have been a waste for me. So hopefully some of the footage that I put in with this video of me using the tool, that's one of the biggest reasons why I take a long time to do some of my reviews is because I like to collect footage of me using them to put in the review to kind of show you exactly what I've done with them and to prove that I put this tool through its paces when I make the review. Hopefully some of that will speak for the drill's quality, dur uh, durability and reliability. And then also just the way it looks at this point, you know, it is used, it has been used, it's not been heavily used, but it, when it has been used, it has been used pretty hard drilling into a lot of metal and it's been holding up just fine. It's been a great drill. I think you'd be happy with it, especially if you're in that DIY kind of range there. And even if you are a regular tool user every day, you've got some kind of trade, uh, you do some kind of service for people, it's a great drill depending on what you're doing. I really appreciate you watching this review. I hope you'll give it a big thumbs up. That always helps. I've got a goal to get to 5,000 subscribers by the end of this year of 2021. So if you see this video, give it a big thumbs up. That'll help me out with the algorithms. Leave a comment. That always helps as well. And then don't forget to hit subscribe. If you're not a subscriber already, I'd really appreciate that as well. We'll see you in the next video.